Hello everybody, uh, my name is Dmitry Orgunov, I'm curator of entomology collections at the Manchester Museum. Our guest today is Mr. Uh, Robin Gregson Brown, an artist and designer who now lives in Derbyshire. Hello. Hello Dmitry. Uh, uh, Robin, this is a, I, I'm very impressed by the quality of your work, the butterfly, since it's my, one of my beloved objects. And did you make these uh, illustrations on the basis of uh, museum specimens or just by memory? No, I made this uh, with a collaboration of yourself and your museum. Um, I was very much inspired by what I saw um, at an exhibition where you attended, showing your collection of butterflies, and uh, rare butterflies in particular. And I think this uh, made me think about scarcity and rarity and that how wonderful it is through my medium of painting that I can introduce some of these wonderful creatures and insects to other people to show the public how wonderful we have a, the, the wonderful world of, of Lepidoptera, for example. And so I decided that uh, because I had an interest uh, in butterflies and moths, Lepidoptera if you like, when I was a boy, a very small boy, <clears throat> and it was because of my mother uh, who also had an interest and she collected uh, the first big moth that I ever had, which was a convolvulus hawk moth. Mm -hmm. and, uh, th and recently I've actually painted this. But anyway, um, my awakening uh, in, the, in my interest in butterflies and moths really happened about three years ago, or reawakening I should say, when I felt it was time I started to <clears throat> revisit my art. I did train at the Royal College of Art, uh, and I graduated in 1960, um, but I went into industry working for big companies like ICI and therefore I became somewhat commercial. However, um, on retirement, I think it was time, I thought it was time to re, as I say, introduce myself to my art. So butterflies was a good way to do this. Yeah, your butterflies look so natural, so so close to, to the originals. And I just I could not help myself but to ask, uh, do you <coughs> do this in order to collect images rather than to collect specimens? Um, it was a way of showing specimens without killing anything. <laughs> and yeah. I think the public today, although there are some people that are still interested in collecting butterflies and moths, I think on average the public do not go out and collect them. Boys and girls you don't see in the countryside today, not in the British countryside anyway, uh, with a butterfly net. So I think to introduce these creatures in the form of pictures and in a special form of picture which is called trompe l'oeil, mm -hmm. which is the means in French the illusion, or in English, the illusion of uh, the eye really creating a, a three-dimensional effect by painting. And I hastily add that they're not photographic. I try not to be photographic because one can take photographs of butterflies anywhere. I try to introduce a little more interest, a little more texture, a little bit more of my art. Oh yeah, yeah, this is what I see. So it, it's, it should be kind of a original interpretation of the object rather than the yes. photographic image. Yes. Yeah. Um, how many museums have been, you collaborated with? <coughs> Well, mainly your own museum, which is at Manchester Museum, and the Derby Museums. Um, I've been thinking about uh, the Natural History Museum, but I think I have quite enough to do with <laughs> between Manchester and Derby at the moment. So, really at the moment, <coughs> your two museums. I also have friends <coughs> who have their own private collections, because as you know, people can build a collection uh, by going to a butterfly farm and on the butterfly farm they grow butterflies and moths and then later these can be uh, used uh, for private collections. This is allowable, I think. Um, I don't know how much of this is done in England, but there's certainly some. Yeah, it's some, yeah, certainly. Uh, what does inspire you to, to draw uh, insects, I mean butterflies? Why not to beetles or some other yeah. bizarre well, creatures? Why butterflies? <laughs> I think because, the, to start with, I'm very interested in, in uh, beetles, for example. I think they're beautiful. I don't think the public share the same view, on average. Uh, it's the same with moths. I think a lot of men like moths, but I think a lot of women don't like moths. Um, but maybe things will change. So I decided on butterflies because I think they're, all right, I have to use the term, prettier, and therefore more acceptable. 
Um, but I don't think they are um, not the only thing I'm going to do. I am going to paint uh, um, insects. I'm not saying I'm going to paint uh, tarantula spiders, for example. I think, but I think uh, there are some beautiful beetles, beautiful colours, iridescent colour, and so forth. So yes, I shall paint those. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> How do you see natural history museums as a, mostly as a natural history libraries, or maybe as a place of inspiration for people, or well, both, or edu maybe a place of education? Well, I think a library um, um, is a storing of records uh, of words or works or pictures or... Um, well, but I think it's both, really. Um, I think a, a museum is very usable, and it should be usable. Um, but it is a record of things past, and so we can catch up with our history. I suppose it's like, um, if you like the other museums we have uh, either the Whitmouth down the road you have uh, which you have a collection of William Morris and that sort of thing and those are people that are interested in that <coughs> it is a place for reference isn't it mm. what is your ongoing or maybe future projects uh, in other kind you could describe well um, I'm looking for a good collection of insects um, I have say I have to say the Derby Museum has a very good collection Maybe it's not as comprehensive as yours. I'm not sure. I haven't seen all your insects yet. Um, so I'm going to have a go at, at those. I'm also going to show butterflies in a natural situation. Um, I'm painting something at the moment in my studio. That is, um, it is a tree, a very old tree. It's still alive, but I have you know the ivy and things growing around the tree, um, and I've got a moth, or maybe two moths on that tree um, in a position, so it's still three-dimensional and natural, resting moths. Um, I'm doing this for a particular purpose um, um, because somebody's asked me to paint them something and I'm going to do that for them. So I'm developing uh, this side of my art and I feel I should, having had a discussion with a member of your team, um, I feel now I should actually paint more than I've been doing. Yes, excellent, yeah. Uh, what could you tell uh, to the visitors of our local museum that maybe you could have a suggestion or you know, something yes. to, to, to how, how to use, is it worth using our collection or is it a really good place uh, well, I, to I, visit? <coughs> I would say that um, any museum is a good place to visit, but I would say from what I have seen that the uh, Manchester Museum um, has a wide range of um, exhibits to, to show people um, that would, they would find very, very interesting indeed. And I don't think this is just for adults. I think children can draw a lot of inspiration from from a museum like this. And in fact, I think it's a very good time to introduce children to a museum like this. You know, it's, um, it's important that children know about museums and know about the delight of a museum. Um, it's not just full of stuffed animals, it is full of things that once lived. I think that's a different way of looking at it. Yeah, and also people who work in museums. And also <laughs> the people who work in museums. Yes, yes. And, and a fund of, yes, of course. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, my pleasure.